This episode of the TV Binge's Pilot Roundtable is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hello and welcome back to the TVBinges.com Pilot Roundtable, a Southgate Media Group podcast. I'm Kyle Tremblay, the editor of TVBinges.com, and I am joined as always by a fellow TV Binges writer. She's a cartoon hero who's moving to Orange County. It's Olivia Richards. Hello. Hey. Yes. Exciting. Yeah. So we are we are plowing through these uh, these network pilot previews. We've already done uh, ABC, CBS, and the CW. If you want to check any of those out, make sure to uh, check our feed in iTunes or go to SouthgateMediaGroup.com. Um, today we are going to be covering Fox, the many many new premieres of Fox. Always. So, yes. <laughs> so you uh, you ready to get started, Olivia? Oh, heck yeah. All right. Our first show is literally 24 without Kiefer Sutherland. It's called 24 Legacy. <laughs> what, what did you think of this one? Oh, my gosh. See, here's the thing. I'm not – I was never, like, a hardcore fan of the show. I've seen, like, maybe two or three episodes tops. How dare you? I know. I know. I just had, like, the ultimate betrayal. <laughs> yeah. So, in my mind, I'm not thrilled for it in a way that I'm guessing somebody would be if you were, like, a hardcore fan of the show. Yeah. Well, as as a uh, longtime fan of 24, although, I, you know – I mean, look, the show had its ups and downs, and it was it was always problematic from a variety of perspectives. But just, like, as an action drama, I always really enjoyed it. It's the kind of TV that I like, where it's just, like, a bunch of action and, and uh, a lot of stakes and a lot of ridiculousness. Um, it's just hard for me to imagine this without Kiefer. It's <laughs> just really hard. It's I was going to say, like, ask, because I know you're a fan of the show and kind of getting yeah. the feeling of – because I know that – Kiefer Sutherland is doing production on the show, I think, but he's not actually going to be in it. Yeah, he's not even in a cameo, they're reporting. So it's like, uh, there's a, it's almost like w- w- when you're the star of a show like 24 or a show like House, too, I think Hugh Laurie has a different juggling act, but in the sort of same vein, there is something that you have to convey that legitimizes the whole operation. And it's so important. And it's, it's the reason that a show like House was different than every medical drama. And it's a reason that a show like 24 is different than the dozens and dozens of action dramas that have premiered. There's something with the lead where you've got to you've got to make it OK for the audience to invest. And it's like a level of sincerity to the performance, maybe. Um, and it's, it's just a very rare trait for an actor or actress to have. And I'm not saying that the the lead of this show doesn't have it. I'm just saying that 24 worked because the Jack Bauer character worked. And the Jack Bauer character worked because of Kiefer Sutherland's performance. And I think that changing that element, removing that element from the mix is probably going to be more problematic than they think it is. I think that I think what Fox is going to find out is that 24 you can have the same rhythms, you can have the same world, you can have the same stakes, you can have the same format, but if you take that one element out, if you take that lead out of the show, I think the whole house might come crumbling down. I think I think the audiences might like not be okay with the ridiculousness ridiculousness of the whole thing once you take out Jack Bauer. But I could be wrong. I'm just I'm just that's my worry watching this trailer. And that's what it kind of feels like even not being a fan of the show like everyone who I mean has even remotely heard of the show, it's always Jack Bauer's name that's attached to it. So being able to have essentially what's a spinoff of the show be able to stand on its own without basically the entire marketing behind the series, I I'm not sure how far it's going to be able to go. Yeah, th- th- in this trailer also there was uh, a little like ten seconds of dialogue where they're showing like various clips, and in one of them. Uh, the wife of our new protagonist says, why does it need to be you? And he says, I'm the only one I can trust. And then in the very next clip, 
uh, someone is asking the the woman, the, the lead female of the show, why do you care? It's not your job. And she says, I'm the only one who could help. Like, 24 is very much a show about being the only one. <laughs> You're the only one that can do something. <laughs> so that's like a common element of the show. But yeah, I just, I just wonder how this is going to work. Uh, it does have 1.6 million views on YouTube, the trailer, which is uh, among the higher ones that we've seen. But that makes sense. There's a ton of, like, name recognition with 24, obviously. Um, I just wonder, like... Seven hours into the season, into our 24-hour season, or tw- I don't know how many episodes it is actually, but um, I just wonder what uh, what what if fans are going to still like if the magic is still going to last without Jack Bauer. But but uh, I'm I'm not sure. I mean, what do you give this one? A thumbs up or thumbs down? Do you want to check it out? I mean, I kind of just want to see the first episode, and because yeah. for me, I don't have that attachment with the original series. I'm not hugely drawn to it, so I'm kind of like, eh, <laughs> like I'm not, you know, I'm not thrilled, but I'm not you know, um, really, I, I don't want to discount it. So mm-hmm. I, I definitely want to see the first episode. So you're like a thumbs sideways. I'm like a, I'm like a thumb sideways. Fair enough. Um, I, I, my problem with this is that I feel like the best case scenario is going to be a poor man's 24. <laughs> like, like, a, like a normal season of 24 that feels like a normal season of 24, but is just like not the best season of 24. Like, I don't, I can't think of a way in which this will be better than like 24 at its best. So that's like a pretty low ceiling for me. So I'm going to give it a tentative thumbs down. Like, honestly, I'm closer to a thumb sideways. Um, it could still be entertaining television, but it's just like, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not quite there yet on this one. Yeah, it might be like an off-brand <laughs> 24. Exactly, yeah, off-brand, yeah. <laughs> like, like the uh, fake Rolexes that they try to sell you in, <laughs> you uh, in New York. Okay, so what's our next show? So our next show is APB, which already that title is a little yeah. No, we're good. Yeah. anything. But essentially it's a tech billionaire who uses his fortune to take over a Chicago PD precinct and turn it into a quote unquote better, faster and smarter private police force. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're telling me that we have a show about a tech, a a Silicon Valley billionaire who's solving the world's problems by throwing money at them. Well, color me shocked. (laughs) It's like they saw everything that CBS was rolling out for their drama and just, completely hopped on the bandwagon <laughs> oh great yeah that's, that's that's great yeah it's 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 identical to that cbs show except this is a police setting and that's in a medical setting um neither of these i'm going to watch i'll just say up front I, I'm yep. completely uninterested but what, what do you have any other thoughts on this one <laughs> even just the title i'm looking at the title yeah. and i heard it like so generic I read the description and it just it didn't get better and then i watched the trailer yeah. and it's just it's every generic procedural that they try to spice up and make interesting by adding a bunch of technology but you know fancy new computers aren't going to sustain the show more than like four or five episodes because that novelty is going to wear off really really fast absolutely here here's my problem with with this and this like and we're gonna have to get political because this is fox so a lot of these shows (laughs) have political leanings and this one obviously does it's like if you want to make a show about a tech billionaire taking over a police force and essentially blackmailing the government into letting him take it over, he basically says, I won't give you $100 million unless you let me take it over. It's kind of like a, a version of blackmail where he's like, I, I will. Well, it's basically a bribe. I guess a bribe is this kind of blackmail where he says, I'll put $100 million in this police force if you let me take it over. So it's pretty much a bribe. Yeah. But like – the problem is on all these shows, they treat the problem, the the sort of um, the the, the they, they they think the fundamental problem of a billionaire taking over a private industry is that the people or not a private industry, a public a public sector, something in the public sector and privatizing it. They categorize the problem as a problem of the people involved, in this case, the police officers, being skeptical. So they have identified the main hurdle to this becoming a reality as the skepticism of the participants, and the show becomes about making believers out of skeptics. I want to see a show like this that deals with the real problem, which is that if you privatize a police force and put a billionaire in charge, then they are no longer police. They are literally mercenaries. 
You have you have you have created a mercenary army that has free license to do things on American soil. That is a bigger issue than the skepticism of the police officers. Like, there you could Google mercenary armies that actually like exist and operate on, on foreign soil, and and Google a whole bunch of issues that are that are caused by that. But as soon as you have like a money motivated army that has no interest in the public good, and they are acting as the primary police force of any town in America. That it, that's a can of worms that is not at all going to be addressed by this show. This show is purely going to treat it like it is a problem with skepticism, when in reality, there is a much bigger problem that needs to be addressed in a show like this, and, and it's just not going to handle it at all. No, I completely agree, and especially, like, I know we've talked about shows that, especially at this time, with everything that's been happening in the news, just feel a little bit tone deaf. Yeah. I think if we can just get you know the media on board with just you know having smarter messages put out there um just within the context of everything that's been happening in our political system i just i think this isn't what people need to be watching at all no like you see like if you remember from ferguson like when the when they had like riot gear and all that stuff it's like yeah this this stuff can get scary real fast like as soon as you untether from any kind of government oversight the uh a a a, a essentially a military unit like like militarization happens really quick and i'm just saying like maybe the show should show the good and the bad of this as opposed to just tre- treating it really with like kid gloves and basically taking the same stance as the CBS show, which is that tech billionaires solve everything. And if only tech billionaires ran everything, like I guarantee within the next year, there's going to be a show about a tech billionaire taking over a school. Like guarantee it. <laughs> like so, so CBS or Fox will have that. Like we're just going to, this is like their, their new template. Now tech billionaire takes something over, makes it better. Everyone's happy. So exactly. Okay, well, now we're moving on to a happier subject because we are talking about demonic possession. <laughs> <It's>... Yes, <laughs> it's a bad day when that's a happier subject. Yeah, this show is based on the classic film of the same name where a pair of priests are called in to cure a demon-possessed child. It's called The Exorcist. Olivia, what did you think of this trailer? Oh my god, I shouldn't be as excited as I am for this pilot. There's most of me that feels concerned for what's going to happen, but I'm just really, really, really excited to see Gina Davis again. Thank goodness, because I am psyched. I, I'm more excited <laughs> than I care to put into words right yeah. now. I, uh, this one has 1.9 million views on YouTube. By the way, APV has 341,000. Yeah. Not great. But but um, this one obviously is getting a lot of attention for, for, the, for the clear reason that it's called The Exorcist, and it is based on The Exorcist. Um... I was not sold on this until I saw the trailer and the trailer was like actually scary to me. Like very rarely are like scary shows scary. And I thought this trailer was like really scary. And so I am psyched out of my mind for this. I'm really excited. And my really core concern with this is I don't know how it's going to work as a network show because yeah. you have shows like American horror story that are, or that are on like FX and, you know, other channels like HBO or Showtime that I think they could really, really, really go there. But I get concerned because it is on Fox of how far they're going to have that room to push the envelope where as far as they could push it. Yeah, I, I definitely hear that, and and I think that's a concern. Uh, speaking of American Horror Story, I'm just glad that Ryan Murphy is not involved in this show. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, because American Horror Story is a tire fire. So, uh, I, I, I mean, what I liked about this trailer is that there was a level of class to it, for lack of a better word. Like, the scares weren't, like, horribly mutilated bodies. You know, it was very much in the keep, keeping in the tone of the film where, where, the, where the, the scares are like related to the possession itself. And then you're going to have like a couple shock, you know, gross demon things. But it's not like you're just like willy nilly killing people, which I think is a nice change. I, I think I think so much television horror fails because all the the only card they have to play is just murder someone in the cast. <laughs> like that's really all they got. Yeah, exactly. So this, is, this is much more. um 
you know, a, a film style horror where it's atmospheric, it's more character driven, um, it's it's a slow burn. I I am also a little bit interested in how like you how how um the show is going to sustain itself over the course of a season, how they're going to avoid having filler episodes, which is the death of any kind of horror show. You know, if this is like yeah. a, if this is like an eighteen episode season, I don't know how long it is, but if this is like eighteen episodes, like how are you going to keep the interest going for 18 episodes. Um, but regardless of that, I'm super psyched. I mean, just the trailer I thought was really, really good. I'm really excited. And my hope for this is that it kind of has something happen like Bates Motel, where they took a classic horror film and something that easily, if left in the wrong hands, could have been really like hokey and cheesy and would have been, you know, cut after maybe like five or six episodes, but they were able to sustain it and breathe new life into the characters and that's really what I want to see with this especially because they have Gina Davis on board and that's just right there in and of itself is so much to work with yeah I I love that I love that Bates Motel comparison because that that is I think the the right and and Fargo does this too true I think an even greater extent where you are taking the source material and building a world you know thematically in line with the source material, but you've, you've really like, you've gone a distance away from it. So that's, that's, that is what I too would hope, uh, for this one. So now, now Fox, by the way, has, uh, Lucifer and the Exorcist. So (laughs) that'll be good. Um, She'll be the good go-to channel. Yeah. Yeah. For, for all all things satanic. Um, (laughs) so what's our next show? Oh my gosh. Okay. I don't even need to give a description for this because literally it's just lethal weapon. It's called Lethal Weapon. It is Lethal Weapon. <laughs> we got Riggs and, and Murtaugh back in our lives. It's going to be a remake of the film yeah. for people who liked the films. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're, we're keeping with our remake a 90s movie as a TV show um, theme. This one reminded me a lot of Training Day, except with a lot more jokes. Um, which, to be fair, I really appreciate <laughs> Um, I, yeah. I, I would much rather they remake something like Lethal Weapon than something like Serious, um, like Training Day, um, just because I think that that lends itself to TV better. I think, it, you know, a show like Lethal Weapons probably has a better chance to succeed in something more serious. So I don't know. What did you think? I'm a little bit torn on it because I can see the chemistry between the two lead actors. And yeah. thank God one of them is not Mel Gibson. Oh, <laughs> so that would have been bad. In and of itself. Oh. But I don't know. I'm I'm kind of torn because we saw what happened with Rush Hour, which yeah. could have worked, but unfortunately kind of fell apart like right away. So I, I'm not sure. I'm 50-50 on this one. I will say that I heard from someone on Twitter that Rush Hour got better as it went. The pilot was rough. Everyone agrees the pilot was rough, and I think we both gave it thumbs downs. Yeah, but, we did. Uh, <laughs> I didn't watch another episode. But nope. – um. I've heard from people that the show got better as it went. So that makes me a little bit hopeful. But yeah, that's the right comparison. I mean, this is Rush Hour, basically. Um, just a, a sort of older and more, even more of a classic. Mm, classic Calling Rush Hour a classic is probably a little bit of a stretch. Live the Weapon is legitimately a classic. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it's got 2.7 million views on YouTube. So people are obviously excited about it or, or at least interested to see it. Um, so, I mean, for this, this, I'm pretty much thumbs sideways on this. Um, I think it has a pretty low ceiling as far as what it can do. Like, I don't think this show is going to rewrite any, you know, I don't think it's going to change anything, but maybe it'll be fun. So I'm just going to give it a straight thumb sideways. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely in the same boat. I want to see the first episode at least, but yeah, yeah. yeah. it could be fun, which is about as, as good as it's going to get. Hopefully fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Our next show is the story of the first woman to play Major League Baseball. It's called Pitch. What did you think, Olivia? I'm really excited about this one. Um, I think just watching the trailer, I'm, you know, already drawn to the story um, of just this compelling, almost um, a league of their own sort of thing where you are seeing, you know, this, this really inspirational story from a woman of color, which is really, really nice. I think we're, we're starting to get to the point where we're getting a lot more diversity on network pilots, which is really, really nice to see. Um, and especially because I think it's coming at the heels of the Olympics. And I've been reading more and more now that it, it tends to be the case where women's accomplishments get attributed to their male coaches or their husbands. So to see that narrative shifted where we actually get to see 
like a woman's sports career rise and have it be her own. I'm really, really excited to see that, you know, play out on screen. Yeah, just on what you said, uh, I, I believe the Chicago Sun-Times or Chicago Tribune issued a uh, an apology today for referring to an Olympic medalist as the wife of a Chicago Bears offensive lineman. It's like, great, guys. Way to, <laughs> way to go. But no, yeah, I think I think casting a black woman in this role is a really interesting choice and, and really um, – a really good choice like that's I think that that does add something to the story um because I think only like less than 10 percent of baseball players in general are black yeah it's, it's it's by far the whitest sport at least of the like major American sports um and and so I I I think that 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 does add like a little bit to it and um you know I, I I'm always a little bit skeptical of shows where they're basically like transparently set up for everyone to think the lead character can't do it. And then the lead character can do it because it's, you know, sort of these shows all follow that kind of progression. Um, but it does get bonus points because it's the first show I think ever to reference my hometown team, the San Diego Padres. She's playing for the Padres, which is such a weird choice. <laughs> I, guess, I guess, I guess they figured that like, it's the most realistic city for this to happen because the Padres are like kind of at the point where they try anything. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> and it's also like the chillest city, you know? So, so like she wouldn't get in like super intense media coverage compared to if she was in New York or something. So yeah. Anyway, like I liked the trailer. I definitely liked the lead performance already. Um, I think there's a lot of stories to tell, obviously. Um, I am worried about like how predictable it's going to be that she'll succeed. Like we're, we're sort of working with defined endpoints unless they really want to go in a different direction. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly interested in it. I haven't watched baseball for a few years, but, but uh, it's, it seems like it could be kind of a good underdog story about breaking barriers. I mean, I, yeah, I could get into it. I'm definitely, yeah, that's definitely where I'm at. So I think for me, it's going to be a thumbs up. And especially for someone who, like, I don't watch sports at all. Um, but I, I'm really drawn to, again, like, that classic underdog story. Um, I think this show can and has the potential to do something really, really cool and tell, like, a, a really, really interesting story. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to go thumbs up as well. So so what's our next show? All right. So this one is Shots Fired. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> We're going to have some stuff to talk about. Um, So this is going, it's a limited series, but it's about a racially charged shooting in North Carolina. Now, okay. Yeah. When you say (laughs) racially charged, you would think that we're, we're dealing with the hot button issue of, uh, of like black lives matter, basically that a, a young black man has been killed by a white cop, but Fox in its infinite wisdom has flipped the script and a, a, what appears to have happened is that a young white kid has been killed by a racist black cop. <laughs> but we're still tackling the whole issue that, like, the societal issue. Like, it's still very much, like, the trailer makes it very explicit, the connection between this and, like, society. And how it's all about fixing society. But through the lens of a white kid being killed by a black cop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh Fox. Oh, fuck. And that's, I just, I was watching the trailer and I am sitting here and I'm just, I'm wondering if it's again one of those instances where this is not the right network to be tackling it. I'm going to go with a straight no on that. I'm yeah. going to, yeah. Yeah, that's a no. Because <laughs> <laughs> you could tell, you could see like the, 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 the mental machinations of like, okay, we want to do a show. We want to capture the moment. We want to make profit off all this. How do we do it? Well, we have a show about police shootings. Okay, but, like, we got a core audience, and that core audience watches Fox News, and they are not going to want to hear about that. I got it. <laughs> like, like perfect. Yeah, perfect. We, we, we know what to do. Like, oh, Fox. Like. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like if, it's like, you can just see, like, they should just make the hashtag for this show All Lives Matter. Like, they should just cut out the middleman and just, like, let us know where they're coming from. <laughs> because this is, like, it's not, it's just not getting any of it. Like, it's not getting any of it. It's not It's not getting what the point is of, of, of all this, why people protest and, and all that. It's it's just, uh, oh, this, it's, this one upset me. 
Oh, and I think the best case for this is that it is a limited series, so it, it's not going any further than a season. Like, it's it's not going to be something that we're going to have to be stuck with for that long. Yeah, I, the best case for me is that critics just savage this show and explain to people why having a black cop shoot a white kid is not the same culturally <laughs> as having the what is happening in America today. Like, this is not analogous. There are certainly individual cops who act individually on their own sort of individual hatreds and, and problems. And those cops can be of any race. There's no question about that. But if what, what we're talking about, what they're trying to capture here is not that. What, what yep. they're trying to capture here is something that is institutional and cultural and has uh, existed for, for a very, very long time in America. And they are conflating those two things um, and just not getting the point of it. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be probably like my biggest thumbs down of the season in that I'm going to have a real hard time watching this show when we actually have to review it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think um, this, this is basically the poster child for missing the mark. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a thumbs down. Definitely the most Fox show, though, of this entire thing. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. The most Fox show. Um, okay, so our final drama is, uh, uh, on a much happier note, our final drama is from the creator of Empire, Lee Daniels. Uh, it is a musical drama about the formation of a Destiny's Child style group and all the all the stuff that goes along with that. It's called Star. What do you think, Olivia? Well, since I know that you're a huge Empire fan, well, I know I'm, that you're probably yeah. like thrilled for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm excited. I'm I've always you know been a fan of musicals and like I, I love kind of the the music industry as a business and getting to see that broken down and examined and, you know, seeing how it, it functions outside of just the art of it and, and more as kind of the the darker side of what can actually go on. Um, so I'm hoping that this can actually stand on its own and it's not just going to be like a poor man's empire. Yeah. I mean, one thing is empire. I love the empire season one. Empire season two was problematic and it kind of lost a bit of the spark. Like, like, like I was saying with like house and, and shows like that, like for a musical to work, there has to be some spark to it. Um, and I, I don't know if this one's going to have it. Like I do, I don't know. Like I was interested enough in the trailer, but to me, like when I watched the empire trailer, that show just popped. Like it's like, Oh, I'm going to love this. <laughs> this is this is for me. I'm going to I'm going to love the show. I didn't get that sense here and maybe it's cuz like I'm not I was not like a the the biggest Destiny's Child fan. I certainly have an appropriate uh, appreciation of Beyoncé, but but <laughs> um uh yeah, I just I I don't I don't know if I just don't know if this one's going to pop. You know, I, I don't I don't know if the I mean part, so much of Empire was that the music was so good. Um, I don't know if, if this is going to be as good, you know, there's just, there's a lot of unknowns with this. And, and again, for me, musicals in general, I'm not a fan of, I really only am interested in them if they're like hip hop influenced. So this, that's the only reason I'm even considering this one, <laughs> but yeah. so we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit skeptical based on the trailer of this one. Definitely. And I think the also one of the biggest pulls of Empire was, I mean, besides Terrence Howard, I think the show would need to have a cookie style character. And yes. I don't know if it's going to have that. Yeah. And that, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. Like that was the thing. It's like the music was great, but then there was also cookie and cookie was just like, I mean, Everything. like, yeah, like she really sort of took control. It was really her show from like the, 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 the first minutes it was her show. And I think that that was a big reason the show was propelled. So I just wonder, is there going to be a character like that that sort of captures that? Yeah, I mean, just a lot of questions. So I'm, I'm going to give it a, a, a thumb sideways since, since you opened the door for that rating. Yeah, pretty much. I'm like kind of one hand, one tentative thumb up and the other like a thumb sideways. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into the, uh, the three Fox comedies that are premiering. Yes. I think we need to go on a later note yes. <laughs> after everything. Ugh. So this one is Making History, um, which essentially is three friends from two different centuries who balance time travel adventures with everyday concerns in their own lives. <laughs> so I'm already just going to say I am like stupidly excited for this. So I wanted to get your thoughts. This trailer 
was the dumbest thing I've ever seen, and I loved every second of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I couldn't even believe how stupid this show is. <laughs> I <laughs> dumbest show. I wrote down, I said it looks ridiculous, and I'm <laughs> in for every second of it. I know. Oh, it's just, it's just I, something about it. Nothing. Yeah, this this might be my most anticipated comedy of the season. I think I, that's definitely where I'm at. Yeah. And for people who haven't seen the trailer, just understand that the time machine is literally a duffel bag. Yeah, that they use in this guy's garage, and it just that's not even the craziest part of it. And oh my god, no, yeah, they're just something tonally. It do, it does feel kind of like. Um, the same sort of like Seth Rogen style comedy, like very um, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. But it, but it it it, it has a, what I would consider to be a modern comic sensibility to it. A, a lot of uh, like about the situations. It's not just like dumb jokes, you know. It's 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 just like right. it's just like a, a couple a couple people in a really dumb situation that they are actively making worse for themselves, and they're just kind of trying to dig their way out. It, I don't know. It, it, this trailer made me laugh a lot, and and so I'm I'm uh I'm looking forward to this one. This is, this is a big thumbs up for me. I'm super excited, so I don't even have enough thumbs to put up for this. So that's yeah. where I'm at. Our next show is The Mick, which is about a um a sort of down on her luck woman, uh who is uh through a series of unfortunate events or fortunate events i guess depending on your perspective is put in charge of her rich uh sister's three kids um and she's like in charge of raising them now in their sort of posh lifestyle uh versus her kind of more hard scrabble lifestyle so it's basically uncle buck but with a woman <laughs> that's exactly what i wrote right i mean it's like literally that show uh, and I'm disappointed because I love Caitlin Olsen from It's Always Sunny, and I, I wanted to see more. And I think it has enough that it might be like really funny for the maybe the first one or two episodes, but then that's going to go away, and then it's just going to be kind of obnoxious. Yeah, I, I I think you're being generous, but I, I think but good. I'm glad you're being optimistic that this will be funny for two episodes. I'm going to go with zero. Yeah. I'm going to say zero <laughs> episodes. This will be funny for. And the trailer's not very good. Um, this is much more sort of the traditional jokey jokes style comedy, even though it's a single cam, which is nice, but yeah. it's, it's very much like, Oh, let's, let's have some jokes. Some old or like jokey have jokes. this completely crazy, irrational woman who isn't yeah. going to be a person. Like she's just going to be like a series of, of weird antics. And, and like uncle Buck, you know, instantly how it's going to go. Like she's going to screw something up. The kids are going to turn on her. And then by the end of the episode, she's going to make it all better. And the kids will learn a lesson about life. Like yeah. copy paste every episode. <laughs> like that's that's how it's gonna be. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm just uninterested. This is a thumbs down for me. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely in the same boat. It's gonna be a thumbs down. Last pilot. Yes. Okay. So this one is exactly as ridiculous as it sounds. Yes. It's called Son of Zorn. It is a live action slash animated hybrid about a cartoon hero who is voiced by Jake or Jason Sudeikis who moves to real-life Orange County in an attempt to reconnect with his ex-wife and their son. Oh my gosh. I don't have words, but this might be my new favorite show. I don't have words, but I have two thumbs, and they are pointed up. (laughs) I'm ridiculously excited for this pilot. Yeah. This... This one won me over because at first I was like, okay, this is the dumbest show to ever air on television. Like this, this is, this is a prank. This is like it, an adult swim fake commercial. <laughs> like, yeah. But then like by the end of it, when he, uh, executes his own bird and then has to keep <laughs> yeah. chopping it, it's like, it's like, okay, well, this is just as dumb as I thought it was, but it is actually hilarious. <laughs> oh my god and i love it because it kind of has an archer feel to it in a, in a weird way and i just again like everything about this should fall apart and should not work yeah but there's so much there archer is a great comparison like imagine archer but the lead character is he-man and 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 every other character is a real person like not an animated person that's what we're talking about here <laughs> so i mean it it's just it's just very funny this trailer it's very very funny and uh yeah i am 
I am psyched about two thirds of the new Fox comedies this year. Right. So, yeah. Fox, Fox, maybe, maybe do more comedy Fox. <laughs> no, exactly. Comedy. Like their dramas, I'm looking at it, but like the second that I got to making history, I yeah was completely a hundred percent on board. So I assume you're giving this one a thumbs up too. A huge thumbs up. Okay, so what is your Fox show that you are the most confident will get a second season? In a weird way, I think it's going to be Son of Zorn. Wow! I know. Like, I, I was sitting there and I was debating it and I was thinking about it. And for some really bizarre reason, I just have a feeling that this show objectively has no reason why it would get renewed. Yeah. But I think it might be. I could see it. I mean, I could definitely see it running for a, like a good long time the way that Archer has, you know, it just, it, it, it just has a, it has a really good feel to it. Um, do I have one? <laughs> what, what am I looking at? No. Uh, that, I mean, that was a great, that, that was a good choice. You know what? I'm going to say the exorcist. I think, I think it's going to work. I think based on that preview, I don't know what they would do for a second season. I assume another possession. <laughs> <laughs> but oh I really liked the trailer. Uh, it seems well done. Um, I hope the season's not too long. But uh, I just I have a I have a feeling like this one this one could get some like social media buzz. I think because um, people like being scared, and it could be good. So I'm I'm gonna go with The Exorcist. I don't feel super I think confident. So yeah, I would love to see that show run for you know at least two or three seasons. All right, your first show canceled oh my god i really hope it's app there's just nothing there there's nothing there um yeah i'm gonna go with the mick i think uh that's a good call I yeah think, i think that one could just crash a burn road. i just again i don't know even if it is better than the trailer indicates i don't know why someone's watching it is my thing like we already have uncle buck and it's not very good so is it gonna be a better version of that like Mm, I don't know if I, st I still don't know if I want to watch. That's not selling me. Even if you, even if you guarantee it's a better version, it's not selling me. So I, I don't know what kind of ratings it's going to do. Um, all right. So, so we only got one of these left, Olivia. We've almost made it to the finish line. We're so close. <laughs> so close. And then, then you'll be all ready for the fall season. You the listener. Um, all right. So you have been listening to the pilot round table at TVBinges.com and Southgate Media Group production. You can find all of our episodes on iTunes where you can review us. We'd appreciate that. Or find us at SouthgateMediaGroup.com. Follow Olivia on Twitter at RichardsOlivia and me on Twitter at KyleLovesTV. Until next time.